So, howdy folks, Maxwell McGee here, and today I'm checking out a little game called Endless Legend. And to help me do that, I'm joined by... Homer. Hello. Nice to meet you <laughs> again. Last time we met, I believe it was at GDC, GDC yeah. earlier this year. Um, but before we get to that, let's set up what is Endless Legend? What are we seeing right now? Okay, so Endless Legends is a 4X fantasy strategy game. Mm -hmm. um, so it's set in the same universe as Endless Space, our previous game. You know, so it's uh, you playing on a planet set in this that's fantasy fic science fiction universe. Right, you guys have like a series of, of games that all have the prefix of endless, and they all <laughs> sort of tie together in some way, yes. but they're all very different games in their own. Yeah, the, the first one was science fiction. Uh, you know, you were like uh, one empire, like uh, conquering the galaxy. Mm -hmm. uh, in this one, you know, you will be on one of these planets and trying to, one of the people of these planets, trying to survive actually that very hostile planet somehow. And, and the other one, uh, Dungeon of the Endless, is uh, just a uh, game that we you know we just love that we just created to connect this, these two uh, universes, like to show the link between the two. So I imagine in typical 4X strategy, what we're about to do here is start settling our first city, doing some research, maybe getting some military units on the field. Talk us through what we're, uh, what we're Exactly. Seeing. So right now you're playing the Volters. It's a very classic uh, civilization of our game. Most of them actually are pretty asymmetrical. Okay. Uh, they, some of them don't need truth, some of them don't need science, you know. But here, you know, we play a classic civilization linked to, to all the universes. Actually, they are kind of uh, space-faring guys, like lost on that planet. They just want to escape the planet. Here, what you see is uh, we are like uh, creating a city. So. The, the world, you know, the, the, it's the terrain of that world is you know, it's hexagonal and with the heights, different heights. So depending on where you place the city, you can have a very good vantage point, very good defensive position. Mm -hmm. You can actually, if you go uh, higher up, you're most likely to find uh, terrain which, which are good for production, uh, down by the sea, you know, probably better for food or around the, the, the rivers. Um, actually, here, like, we found a pretty nice place where we can have actually a good mixture of food, science, industry, dust. Uh, should be a pretty good city to start the, uh, the game. Okay. Um, so now we're going to attack some little uh, guys in our, uh, around us. So <laughs> you, you th th that, that world is filled with like smaller, what we call minor factions, uh, that you can, uh, that will uh, attack you if you don't do anything. Okay. But if you manage to either negotiate with them or uh, kill them or <laughs> subdue them, yes. um, they will join your empire. So sometimes willingly, sometimes not. Um, by doing that, it's uh, when they do join your empire, they will uh, give your empire one new trait uh, that will change the way your civilization uh, interact with the with the world. You know. Uh, science bonus. They will mm -hmm. give you, uh, you know, better movements on your troops. Uh, some of them can uh, actually, at some certain point of the game, can be extremely interesting. Um, and they also will allow their troops to fight for you. You can recruit them. Um, so, so it looks like when we engaged in battle with these creatures, the map sort of changed a little bit, but the I don't think the actual layout of the map has changed at all, right? No, no, it's exactly the same layout. We, we just um, uh, simplified it so it's easier to read. Okay. Uh, but actually, we can just fight this battle, uh, but at the same time, we could go back on our uh, city and manage it, or we could have another fight besides we can have two fights going on. Uh, it's one place, one time. Uh, we, we didn't want to, uh, want to have uh, battles that you know would be in another map that was that take place on some other yeah, screen. Yeah, and then lose time, and and then you know it, it, I think it takes you away from the immersion, you know, because it's somewhere else. Um, so it, that sense of continuity for us was very important, and also we put a lot of effort in trying to have the the train at the center of the strategy. You know, right, you were talking about the importance oh. of elevation oh. earlier when we were settling. Oh. And it's even more true, obviously, for battles, you know. So you want to always have the high ground. You want to, to especially for your archers, or to use the choke points for your advantage. Uh, and depending on how, or from where you attack, you know, that, that village, you know, right. it will totally change, you know, the layout of the battle. Uh, but the good thing is you can always plan ahead. Okay, so now we are going to uh, attack. So we are on the hill. As you can see, um, there is before we attack, we have all of our uh, cliffs and there's only one point of passage. I have a lot of troops I can attack from distance actually, so I will be actually on top of that hill okay. trying to completely, completely crush. We definitely have the high ground in this scenario. Exactly. So that's why the, the it's always good to, to plan ahead. Okay. So they have a lot of cavalry, especially not a lot of distance, so they're going to be good for me. Uh, yeah, uh, I have, yeah, so that should be good, yeah, ready to fight. So, we set like offensive position. <laughs> so what sort of determines where the units 
fan out to when the battle starts. Okay, um, so, so wh what happens is the the where we meet mm -hmm. is the center of the battle. That's the only two hexagons that touch each other okay. at the beginning, or well, not really, only you have three touching, but that's the middle one. Right, right, right. And, and from there, you know that troops will deploy uh, behind me uh, when, I, when I attack with my okay. troops and behind the others. Okay. Um, now, the only thing, they need to have a path that goes from the original point to uh, the rest of the map. If there's no path, uh, they can't deploy to that area. Because sometimes you can even like Because you don't want to have like a guy isolated on some other part exactly, outside you, and, of and that. Else you wouldn't it wouldn't make sense, you know, it would, you would wonder why he would appear yeah. there, if you couldn't go there. The, the sometimes what, what you try to do is to corner some people in some situation where they can't deploy the, 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 the whole army. Um, so right now, what we uh, are doing, we deploy our troops, um, we chose, you know, a, a good position. The, all the, the, the white dots that you see is the morale of each one of the troops. Okay. The morale is influenced by the number of units that they have around them. So the more they're surrounded, the better, the stronger they will be the, and the more powerful they will be. The idea of that is to try to put your troops together uh, in a, like a, as a group mm -hmm. and to try to hold the best uh, altitude, the best positions with your troops together. Uh, so it's pretty interesting because it gives you a sense of having like kind of military lines, military strategies. Now, like wh what we just did, we, we just cast a spell, which is what we can do as, uh, you know, the, the Arden Mages. Arden Mages, uh, they are kind of the only real mages uh, okay. of that world, and they are the more or less the only ones who can't cast spells in battle, or actually also uh, on the adventure map, where they can also you know, cast the economical spells. So if we're playing as the blue Arden Mages, who are we fighting against? So uh, that's the, the Roving Clans. That's uh, another one of the factions that have been introduced in, uh, with the beta lately. Um, the guys, uh, the Roving Clans, cannot declare war to anyone. Uh, even if they wanted to, uh, to it, they can't do it. They can only provoke you to do so, and, and if you oh. decide to. Uh, they just harass you enough until exactly. you can't take it anymore. And they are really good at harassing <laughs> you. So that's, that's why, I mean, they're extremely annoying uh, as neighbors. Uh, so the, the, like, the good thing is uh, they, they can, uh, they're extremely good with commerce. Mm -hmm. uh, you need to be friends with them uh, to uh, exchange anything. So if, if you want to buy or sell anything on the marketplace, you need to be in good terms with them. Uh, everything you're going to sell there, uh, they're gonna, going to take a cut on it. So <laughs> they want you guys to of exchange. Course, yeah. So they, they if, uh, if you're getting paid, they're getting paid. So. And if they're unhappy with you, they just expel you from the marketplace. And that's good. It can be problematic. Though. You need resources to, to, to build your armies, and sometimes one of the best way to get these resources is through the marketplace. So. Uh, yeah, they, that they uh, pretty cool tricks. What they can do also, it's one of the new things we also add with the beta. That's what we call the privateers. Okay. The privateers are um, when you have armies composed only of mercenaries. As you can see, we totally crushed. You the did. I was watching the, you guys the, just the wipe the floor. <laughs> so and and, and and they're pretty good units. So uh, so pretty happy with that. Um, so and so anyway, and so. Um, the mercenaries, uh, if, you, if you make armies only of some mercenaries, mm -hmm. you can tell them to become privateers. And privateers, uh, nobody knows who is the owner of these privateers. They okay. are just like kind of, they look like uh, random units coming from the computer, from you know these minor factions, but actually they are being Oh, but they're being controlled, controlled by behind the scenes. Or by someone else. You could do like some proxy warfare yeah, kind exactly. of business. Exactly, or like guerrilla. Yeah, and, yeah, and okay. Sometimes you know, what, what, what we do is, uh, especially in multiplayer, it's like you know, this one guy who send like some his priority is between two other guys. Okay. So it, it looks like it's coming from one of the two, so, oh. so the guys know <laughs> what, what to fight <laughs> oh, uh, together. Good. So you have some pretty cool psych psychological stuff you can do. And uh, sometimes you could you even see situations where people attack their allies with that. Yeah. So depending on their the best friends, you know, I won't be in good terms with you, and you know, you do all <laughs> these tricky things. So it's, it's, it's pretty cool uh, addition to, to the game that we, that we added. Yeah, so I know you guys have just moved from, from sort of the alpha phase into the beta phase. In yes. addition to privateers, like what else has changed? So, so basically, by reaching the, the, the beta, was, uh, the game is mostly complete. We have a few other <laughs> things that we <laughs> sure, still sure, wanted sure. To, to add. Uh, but the, the whole gameplay loop is there. Um, there's only, w w uh, so basically what we had is like what the roads, as you can see. Okay. Uh, the road system and the whole commerce system, um, it, which is linked to the roads. Um, you, you we didn't want to go through micromanagement of building roads, so uh, so what you do when you create a city, you can uh, create a building, which is roads, mm -hmm. on, on that city. And it will connect your city to the closest city, at okay. least in your region, and by taking the fastest path. So if normally you would have built yourself by hand that road, it would have taken that same path, uh, because that's what makes uh, more sense. 
and later uh, your caravans will use these roads to, to do the commerce and through the road networks that will be created by all the players you know you can slowly reach further and further places so to have like you know better caravans uh, but someone can try to cut you know your caravans yep. routes and to try and to by taking land they so start laying into your profits a little bit then you want to attack them <laughs> because you want to go back to your profits so so um, that's the same that's the same on sea you know we have uh, seaports and uh, the seaports will try to connect to other ports in the world mm -hmm. uh, looking by uh, uh, so it, again, you will want to control the, the, the kind of things. So also, we added uh, so supports. We added uh, the, the ships. Uh, right now, you can you know embark uh, anywhere in the world. Okay. Um, the marketplace was already there before, but uh, you know we have a lot of things that you know we can do, especially with roving clans. Roving clans. Uh, so we know we're not playing at the roving clans, but if you were playing as roving clans here, <laughs> you would see uh, all the exchanges uh, from all the others. So you know. You're the only one who know who bought what and who sold oh, what. Okay. So you know what they need, what they're craving for, and you know you know what you need maybe to to stock up to sell to and them. And then you or can uh, uh, you can uh, adjust the market exactly based on those needs. Exactly. Make sure you know you're the one who profit from that. Uh, so it's it's pretty it's pretty good information. It's also information you can sell. What we added with the diplomacy. Okay. Uh, diplomacy was there in very basic form. Uh, you were more or less uh, or less always at war. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, as you see, there's this little, little like purple star, uh, yeah. we call that influence, and everything has an uh, influence cost in, uh, in the diplomacy. And the more you get along with someone, the more like uh, negative actions uh, are expensive in terms of influence. Okay. And therefore, you know, if you want to declare war to someone, uh, if you don't want to pay fortune in terms of influence, and influence is used for diplomacy, but it's also used to for any kind of uh, political actions in your empire. Uh, you can invest that, for example, to what we call empire plans, which uh, gives you a big bonus for the next 20 turns. So instead of just like flat out declaring war on them, you want to like wear them down a little bit exactly. with like some insults and some... It, some and, and, and therefore, you know, you know that someone is coming for you. You know, okay. it, it's not like that way. It's uh, not like a huge surprise. Yeah, like, like what? You know, that's <laughs> not how you do it. So it, it gives also that sense of, of, of very logical. Um, it, it, There's it, a progression it, there. It contributes to to, to make it believable, basically. And and everything that that we do in building the, the, that game is to make sure there is nothing that you know, takes you out of that belief. You know, you want to make sure that you know you you there and and that diplomacy by understanding what the others want and how they get there it helps you to, to to contribute to that. Mm -hmm. So, have you guys talked about a uh, uh, release window, or release timing? So we like we uh, announced that. So we we told uh, actually uh, uh, last week uh, our community that uh, we are coming out. We hope uh, to come <laughs> out. You know, so everything goes uh, according to plan. Yeah, yeah. according to plan <laughs> by the end of the summer. Okay. Which is also the the, the, the good tra good thing about being independent. You know you. You aim at a window, you know. If, if you're happy with the game, you know you you do it. If you're not happy, you know you you delay. Uh, you know it's uh, you, you have don't have any pressure, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, others than, than than that. So, but yeah, we definitely hope to, to reach the the end of summer. The thing is also for us, we we definitely are looking looking forward to have the game being out because you know it's another phase of the life of the game that starts. You know where we can start, you know, adding new content again. We can you know, uh, you know on endless space we did like uh, six free DLCs plus you know an expansion pack. Sure. And it's kind of stuff that you know we want to to go on, you know, uh, with the life of, of the game, and also uh, by go, go, going live, you know, we have quite a lot of players already in uh, all the access, but we'll have a lot more players also with that. And it's also new feedback coming in, new strategies coming in, yeah. you know. So that's all just good data. Yeah, <laughs> good data exactly. All so right, well, like thank it. you so much for sitting down and chatting with us. Thank you.